there's something we need to talk about on it's about this big around no shimmy no shake really shitty hybrid well test drive done drives nice rides nice steers nice no shimmy no shake ready to ship this is a 2023 JL Rubicon. We built this for Sierra National Forest. It came out really nice. Has a bunch of different people's parts all put together in a very cohesive way and I think it's ready to uh, go out on the trails. There's something we need to talk about on this one. Because it's a 2023, the only vehicle that they could procure was an e-torque. And let's, let's understand that an e-torque does not mean that this is a 4xe and that it's an electric Jeep. So an e-torque simply means that on the driver's side, there's an extra box and that is the extra battery. That's how you can tell it's an e-torque. Um, and then you can pop the hood and you can look underneath here and see if I can find it for you. But right here in the center of the Jeep is a giant motor. So instead of an alternator off to the side, right in the middle of the valley is a giant motor. And it looks almost like a, like a golf cart motor, you know? So what that motor does, it's about this big around, it's right in the middle. Um, what it does is it works as an alternator when you're driving down the highway, belt spins, creates power, charges the vehicle. When you come to a stop, it switches modes and it becomes an electric motor. And when you accelerate off the stop sign, power from the battery underneath in the back comes up to this electric motor and the pulley actually spins under power and helps all the belts move and gives you that extra, you know, five or 10 horsepower lurch off the line. So in a sense, it's a really shitty hybrid. It's not enough power to drive the Jeep, but you know, it does its thing. Along with that is a bunch of extra cooling hoses that go to the back, cool the batteries, just a bunch of nonsense that you don't really want. But in 2023, you had no choice. One of the things we do, we usually put PSC power steering on these with a hydraulic assist ram. Unfortunately, on the diesels and the e-torque model, you cannot put an engine driven pump and run power steering fluid in the old way. So we did the PSC kit on this, the V6 e-torque PSC kit, which just does a larger electric pump, basically the same thing, but it's been modified, higher volume, higher flow, but it comes with all the rest of the normal PSC stuff. The big bore box, tapped, uh, the ram, hoses, all that stuff. So under the hood, the only thing that's different, which you can't even tell, is that it has the new PSC uh, electric power steering pump. Back to the actual setup on the Jeep, we have Genrite fenders, powder coated black, the whole white and black law enforcement thing goes. Genrite has awesome fenders. But we went ahead and used the American Adventure Labs inner fenders, pre-powder coated as well. And the reason we did this is this right here. So take a look at that. This is the King 2.5 shock with clickers and their inner fenders are pre-clearanced to fit the King shock. So all we had to do is put the inner fenders in, which is really nice, um, easy to do, doesn't take a lot of time. Has our long arm kit on there, the WFO long arm kit. And then on all these Ultimate 60s, it's a Spicer Ultimate 60, we add new shock mounts about an inch further out to keep the body of the shock from hitting the frame when it flexes. Uh, so we modified it in that way running 40 inch Nitto radial trail grappler tires, kind of our tire of choice a lot of the time. And then also the Hutchinson black double bead lock, DOT approved, total Gucci tire wheel package, we love it. I'm not exactly positive on this one, but I believe it's four and three quarter back spacing on a 17 by nine wheel. They used to have uh, in the five and a quarters, and I believe it's now four and three quarter. Rage fourth front bumper, and it has a single row light underneath and then the rigid uh, ambers up front there. Xeon 10S, Factor 55 hook and fair lead. 
Um, and if you look down underneath here, it's kind of hard to see because the thing's so low, it sits on three and a half inch coils, but our billet 7075 WFO tie rod, our large tie rod ends, our drag link. Uh, the drag link uses the apex ends to give us the most up travel. And hiding right down underneath here is the PSC RAM with our proprietary WFO mounting tabs that mount it to the tie rod that we sell and not clamped on to the aluminum. In order to do that, we put our track bar bracket on as well. Um, this has our uh, track bar on it to complement the rest of the long arm, which has the chromoly upper uniball end, FK rod ends on each end, so no give in the track bar. Standard bump stops on this, no air bumps. And like I said earlier, standard coils with just a King 2.5 clicker. We find that that is an awesome package that just rides well, lasts long, and kind of allows you to hit the trail a little hard. And uh, due to the fact there's gonna be a bunch of different people driving this that aren't necessarily uh, off-road guys, you know, at heart, um, we're trying to make a very uh, easy to drive, easy to handle package that will get them where they need to be in our national forest. As far as rock sliders, we decided, you know, law enforcement officials, lots of weight, hauling stuff in and out, very rough trails, um, no more body mounted rock sliders for these guys. And we went with the Moto Built frame mounted, which are just rigid as hell. I mean, these are so low to the ground and so long and you're, and you're patrolling some of the roughest trails. Um, this one hopefully will be on the Ducey Ursham sometimes. Gotta be able to just pound these off of boulders. In order to fit this Moto Built frame mounted rock slider on here, you can see we've done a modification. We put a piece of quarter wall DOM tubing right here. What that allows you to do is reach in and uh, get the bolt for our long arm to get the link out to change the bushing or work on it. Then we also modified the back foot, if you look up underneath, we cut it off and then we remounted it to the body mount, um, to the hard part of the body mount uh, to fit our long arm. And just about everybody's long arm seems to be uh, interfere with everybody else's rock sliders. So sometimes we've got to do things to just make different parts work together. Um, once again, Genrite fenders in the rear. And again, American Adventure Labs inner fenders, which have been modified, cut and stretched and then reattach to fit the 40 inch tire in the wheel well. It's these little details to open things up and make everything uh, travel and work that make a really uh, cohesive and good operating vehicle. Uh, on the rear, Rage 4th rear bumper. Um, and then we've done some witchcraftery here to mount the 40 inch tire um, on a swinging tire rack that is frame mounted. So kind of took a bunch of parts we had in the shop. So this spare tire is carried by the frame on this side. It's an old Poison Spider swinging tire rack. Rigid backup lights hooked up to the actual reverse lights in the vehicle. And then we moved the license plate and camera uh, to the spare tire. As far as underneath goes, um, we always like to use the metal cloak skids. So underneath this thing, it has the metal cloak skids that are powder coated to our WFO proprietary color here and uh, our long arm with Duraflex joints. And you can even see right in here, rigid rock lights underneath this. So uh, if they're responding to anything at night or on the trail, you can see better. These are really big vehicles, wide, low slung. It's nice to see around you. That adding the rock lights is a big benefit to these vehicles when you're off-roading. 1350 CV front drive line, 1350 CV rear drive line. Uh, the front is two inch 120 wall. Uh, the rear is 095 wall, three and a half. Has the factory electronic Rubicon disconnect on the front sway bar. Um, you know, until that electronic disconnect becomes a problem, we're gonna go ahead and run that. Uh, it should work out fine. As I mentioned before, this has um, metal cloak, three and a half inch dual rate coils, front and rear in it and standard bumps. As far as the interior goes, not a whole lot going on. What you'll notice is there is no switch pod or anything um, to run the lockers on this thing. Well, what we did is we used the Taser pigtails and we ran the uh, electric lockers that are in the Spicer Ultimate 60s front and rear with 538 gears 
to the factory switch on the dash and we did that with the taser harnesses so the lockers operate just like factory on this thing with the exception that the guys are going to have to get out and lock the front hubs um, the other things that we added as far as the air compressor that is under the front seat and the rock lights are on the two accessory switches there's four um, so we have two switches that are still available so very simple inside because they're gonna have to upfit it with all their um, you know law enforcement boxes and switches and everything else so we didn't want to complicate the system too much very last forgot to tell you but I think it's pretty cool is obviously you're gonna be hauling stuff looks like the back of a regular Jeep pop it open this is our JL cargo basket powder coated black looks awesome with the white and black theme that we got going on and then it also has the rubber mat in the bottom there so no rattling no squeaking um, looks like it's just part of the vehicle so you know not over the top kind of a sleeper but one ton 40s lockers lights PSC hydro assist one finger down the highway kind of ready to go out there and do work so I enjoyed building it and hopefully we've got another one coming down the pipe.